What is up, heroes? This is Minite Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, a short episode, we had the chance to visit the infirmary, talk with a couple of the people that were there, and then realize there was this crisis about the chromatic doors that were going to be opening any time within, well, just a few minutes. And so there was a pretty intense deliberation uh, before Sigma ends up deciding who is going to go where. And so we are partnered with Alice and Kay, and we are in the recreation room for the first time, which is in and of itself a very exciting prospect. I am very tired at the moment. I'm going to be visiting Lizzie, uh, which is a lovely thing to look forward to. For those of you who don't know, that's my girlfriend, um, who I played through the Danganronpa games, etc. with. And... This is some late night recording to make sure I have videos uh, for YouTube while I am there. So forgive me if my brain is a little bit fried. I've had a long day and, well, for all we know, this could be a pretty long night, right? So without further ado, let's hop into the puzzle. There will also be occasional interruptions, so lovely. Anyways, let's explore and take a look. The first thing that jumped out to me is this piece of paper on the pool table. A pool table, huh? It looks as though a piece of the felt has been torn off. Oh, so that's an absence of felt. Some of the felt has been torn off. Okay, I wonder why. Is there anything in any of the holes? No? Any of the pockets? Okay, I don't really notice anything else particular. Is there something down here? The ball retrieval slot. Yeah, that's where the balls that go into the pockets come out. Alright. Well, I'm sure there's some weird connectivity between the, the different pockets and stuff, but... For the time being, it seems there's just really some fixation on the felt. What do we have up here? Hey, Alice, what's the deal with that screen over the pool table? I think it's a scoreboard. Alright, naturally that's going to display our passwords. That's a pretty fancy fixture. Okay, let's look around a little bit. Oh, look at this interesting dynamic as we walk around the pool table. Sorry if that made any of you motion sick, but let's take a look at this. So this is the arrangement of all of the, the pool balls in the triangle prior to being broken. It looks like all of the colors are paired, and they all seem to be eight apart, except for the eight ball, of course, which is on its own. I'm sure this will matter at some point. What's this supposed to be a picture of? They're those balls from that kid's show, right? If you collect seven of them, then you get a wish. This isn't Dragon Ball, Alice. But there's more than twice that here. Oh, then it's a set of billiard balls. Then? <laughs> Look, I think it's probably a hint. Just grab it and bring it with you. Oh, so we're taking it with us. Alright, and we'll have that in the archive. Good to know, good to know. That is going to be the lock. Um, for the exit and everything. Nothing too exhilarating here. Oh, we can turn the lights on and off. Very interesting. A brief glimpse around reveals a couple well-lit areas, but otherwise nothing too striking about the lights being off. But that's good to know. Alright, well, we'll continue to zoom out and check this little area for refreshments. Looks like that's the felt. The billiard balls. Oh, is this going to be uh, one of those puzzles where you have to slide to order them? Are those pool balls? They look rather odd, though. Aren't pool balls pool balls usually painted a variety of colors? These appear to be all white, although they are numbered. Hmm. Well, might as well try using them with the table. Okay. I guess that's fair. Can we open this? We can. I'm surprised it's not locked, actually. So we have the scrap of felt. What do you have to say about that? Huh. I wonder why this felt is damp. Presumably because it has been soaked in something. Okay, and then what do we have down here? It looks like these are all the same thing. Do you think we're supposed to pick the right bottles or something? I hope not. They all look exactly alike to me. Then just take whichever one you want. So luminol, probably something that lights stuff up. Presumably, I don't know. This says luminol. Then it must be luminol spray. It reacts with certain things such as blood and glows with a very faint bluish white light. It's often used in forensic investigations. Huh. What are we supposed to do with it? 
maybe you could spray it on the pool table. Is this an actual thing, guys? I haven't heard of it before. I just hear of, you know, using the black light at a crime scene or something. The pool table? Why? When I was examining it earlier, I noticed a few areas where it looked like something had been wiped off. If it was blood, that would be pretty bad. But I would imagine it's going to reveal some sort of track um, for us to, you know, a, or a path to throw the balls or slide the balls across the table. Or some connection between the different pockets. Let's look at this darts game, though. An automatic scoreboard, huh? Nice. If we had some darts, we could play a game or two. A dartboard. If we had some darts, we could get a game. Okay. So clearly we don't really have that capability at the moment. What is this diagram telling us? So 20 times 1 is 20, 20 times 2. So it's telling us about the different, you know, the double, triple, single zones on a dartboard, as well as the bullseye being worth 100. And I think it's just demonstrating how it works, more so than telling us a specific score to actually aim for. So we'll have to keep that in mind. Now, what do we have over here? I'm really curious about this setup. So, this looks like some sort of control panel. There's something on the screen. Rectangular button turns stage lights on and off. Circular button activates armor. Huh. Alright, well, what happens if we turn the stage lights on? They're like that currently, and what happens if we activate the armor? There's a triangle in the middle of the circular button. I'm gonna push it. The suit of armor swung the weapon it was holding at the other suit's shield. Okay. Is this guy holding a shield with glass on it? Hey, doesn't it look like there's something under the glass? Yeah, hard to tell what it is from here, though. And we can't get to it as long as it's covered in glass. So I think the idea is we maybe switch weapons or something? This guy's holding something. A lance, okay. This is a spear. More specifically, it is a charging spear for use from horseback. Even more specifically, it is a lance. You see how the tip is pointed? As you may have surmised, it was used primarily as a piercing weapon. Okay, can we use it on the shield? Guess I'll give him the weapon I've got in exchange for whatever he's holding. So here's a double-bladed axe, okay. Ah, uh, a labrys... hmm. Perhaps I should just call it an axe. <laughs> in any event, it is a European weapon with a bilaterally symmetrical blade. Okay. And maybe we give that to him? And then we see how that goes? Maybe that'll be able to break a little bit better? We got a pool cue over here. Interesting. Okay. Ah, a pool cue. Why was a suit of armor holding a pool cue? Perhaps it is not an ordinary cue. The butt end is a little weird. It's got a hexagonal hole on the tip. That is indeed quite weird. Also, why would we need a hexagonal? Would we screw something with it? I don't know. Were you planning to give this suit of armor the pool cue? I don't think that would be appropriate. That cue stick is meant for more important things. Perhaps you should hold on to it for now. I guess I'll just take the weapon it's holding then. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. So we have a trident. Okay. This is for catching fish, right? Originally, yes. I believe this is a slightly modified version, though. It is known as a trident. Okay. So, let's see what happens when we hit play now. And push! Did that actually break it? It did. Lovely. That looks like an Allen wrench, maybe? Oh! The shield. The glass is broken. We can get to that thing on his shield now, right? Yeah, let's grab it. Yeah, so it's an Allen wrench. This is the hexagonal shape that's going to be relevant to the our pool cue. We we'll probably use this and unscrew and find something inside. Key with circular tip. Key with circular tip. This is the part of the cue stick that we removed with the Allen wrench. Yeah, I can't get the wrench back out though. Perhaps the wrench is part of it now? If it is, that makes things easier for us. How so? Well, look at it. Doesn't it look like a tubular key? I think we can use this to open the lock. Have we seen a lock yet? Can we, also, can we, uh... I was gonna say, can we grab the glass on the ground? But I guess not. Hmm. 
All right, let's see what's going on over here. My God, this deer must have phased halfway through the wall and then gotten stuck. How horrific. That's just a mounted head. It's a decoration. Ah, I did think it had extraordinarily long legs. Knows so much about European battle weapons, but then is baffled by the, uh, <laughs> the deer that's, you know, walking through the wall, supposedly. All right, let's check out what's going on over here. Oh, how nostalgic. This is a jukebox. It plays an old form of music media known as a record. With the push of a few buttons, you can listen to your favorite songs. It looks like it's not plugged in. There's an outlet over there, but I don't think the cable is long enough. It won't reach? Doesn't look like it. Guess we can't use the jukebox right now. Interesting. So we're going to need to input a, you know, a song at some point. The coin slot. And But first we need to make sure it actually will... Um, Nothing happens when I push the button, why don't you hit it? A little damage might make it more flexible. What that kind of logic is that? If being locked means it's working correctly, then if it's not working correctly, it won't be locked. Nope. If we break it completely, then we're boned. What an astute observation. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Let's take a look at the, the cable. Alright, so it doesn't seem like we can interact with that much at the moment. I want to see, what can we do with this? Slash, what is this? Is this a record? There's a round indentation inside the frame. Perhaps something round goes in it. Oh, the record's not in there! Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. Uh, there's a round indentation inside the frame. Yeah, so we gotta put something in there. What's going on in the middle one? So this one's locked. Huh. Why won't it open? There's something in there, but we can't take it out if it won't open. So it says the score is 91, and it has three darts. So we probably need to unlock this in order to actually play the dart game, and this is telling us exactly what we should do for that dart game. There's a round indentation inside this frame. I wonder if I'm supposed to put something round in it. Okay, so we don't have anything for that yet, to my knowledge at least. Then we will continue looking around. We still have this over here, this monstrosity. It looks like this extension cord is plugged into the ride, but I'm not sure why. What do you mean? It's probably there so the ride can get power. That's not what I mean. There's way too much slack. Doesn't it look like the ride's power cable is long enough without the extension cord? Then let's take the extension cable with us. Don't forget to plug the ride back into the outlet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. So we've obtained the extension cord, which we can obviously use for the jukebox in the corner. Let's take a look at this, though. It's one of those rides like you see in front of the grocery store. It looks like Zero Junior. I get the feeling someone's laughing at us. <laughs> like the player. I don't like it. All right. Insert coin. Huh, there's an oddly shaped keyhole on the front of this box. Don't you have something that's shaped just like that keyhole? Oh yeah, now that you mention it. I was going to say, we conveniently have this key with a circular tip. Alright, this tool I've got here should fit the keyhole here. And it took a bit of work to make, but yes, the tip does look remarkably similar. Alright, here we go. What are we going to find inside? It opened. Then let us take a look inside. Plenty of coins. You know, I was all excited about finally being rich after we found these in here, but they don't look right. I agree. The markings are strange. I have a feeling they only work on this ride. That seems likely. In any event, we may as well take a few of them. Huh. So what happens when we give the coin to the ride? Oh, were you planning to put a coin in there? Yeah, I figure if I put a coin in here, then maybe it'll start up, right? Hmm. Okay, I'll just drop a coin in and... <laughs> Kay, why the heck are you riding it? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Love this. Look at me go. Kay is having a ball on Zero Junior right now. I, I can't watch this. There is no God. Hey, Sigma, Alice, he's waving at us now. Alice, what's going on? I'm scared. I'm not watching. This isn't happening. Everything is fine. Huh? What was that? It seems to have taken a picture. Hooray! It took a picture. Interesting. 
<laughs> ah, that was delightful. Now, where is that photograph? Ah, there we are. Excellent. I give this to you as a memento of our time together, Sigma. I, uh, I don't really... Just holding it makes me feel wrong. Now, now, that's hardly necessary. That's pretty funny. The real question is, what are we going to notice? Yeah, so Z9D1. That seems to be what we play on the record player. So, we'll back up from this. A ride that looks like Zero Junior. I don't see anything else to interact with here. So, I think that concludes our initial search of the room. So, there are a couple things we can do immediately. Um, I'm tempted to use the extension cable on the jukebox, especially given the what, what we learned from that photo. The other thing is to use that spray on the pool table. So, well, we'll, we'll deal with this first. Again, I feel like that's kind of where my mind is at at the moment. Hmm. If I connect this extension cord to the power cable, then plug it into the outlet... Should be up and running. Okay. So, what was it? Z9D1? Just to be safe, Z9D1. Let's try doing it. Z... Nothing happens when I push the button. Nine? Nothing happens when I push the button. Oh, do I need to insert a coin first? Okay. Now to put a coin in here. <laughs> now everything lights up. Lovely. The button's lit up. Guess it's on now. Now we can hit Z9. That's going to be one of the records. Is it going to give us a record? It is. There's a gold record sitting in the jukebox. Well, taking it. Or, we're taking it. Hey, looks like somebody's gone gold. <laughs> Clever. I don't think it's actually gold. Alright, and then next up is going to be D1. Silver? Oh, not platinum. There's a gold record sitting in the jukebox. Okay, so we have two gold records now. It's pretty clear that those go in here, so let's add those. There we go, looks good. And one more. Switch up our inventory. I'd say things are going pretty smoothly so far. There we go, looks good. And now that we've done that, huh? Did you hear something? Look, the light on the frame in the middle is green now. Yeah, so, oh yeah, so it is. I'm guessing that means it might have unlocked. Exactly. So, let's take a look at this. What's this thing? It's a box with darts in it, isn't it? Alright, so let's take a look at this. So, score 91. It's got these two arrows. Maybe that's indicating how you slide the glass off. I'm not too sure if the images of the darts really mean anything, so much as we have three darts. Are they functional darts as they are now? Is it a magnetic dartboard? Because if not, we're still missing part of it, right? A case for darts. There are three things in it that look like darts. They don't have tips, though. Just the shaft and fletching. It looks like there's some kind of picture inside of the case. And have you noticed these markings on the lid? We can worry about that later. Right now, I think we should focus on making complete darts. Yeah, I'm trying to decipher it too, Kay. Don't worry. Alright, so I feel like we've explored that road for the time being. So now... Let's use this luminol on the pool table. Hmm. Now to spray this table with luminol. Okay, so we did that. I guess I should also place the felt back on the pool table. Ah, looking at your piece of felt, I see. Yeah, I was thinking about trying to fit it in this bare spot on the pool table. And there. Lovely. Okay, so now the idea is we we're supposed to turn off the lights. And we should be able to see some interesting stuff, I believe. So, let's take a look. Pool table, what do you have for me? Interesting, okay. So, this looks like something I should write down in my memo. So, let's go ahead and do that. C A F D B E. Okay. Now that we have that written down, let's see what they have to say about it. Hmm. There are six letters on the table. Yeah, looks like they were written in something that reacted with the luminal. They appear to be the letters A through F. No pattern that I can see, though. Yeah, I'm a little bit curious about that, too. So, what do we do now? Oh, that's right, we have these, um... 
we have the billiard balls that we can potentially use here. A pool table seems like a natural place to use pool balls. No, it's too dark. Don't know what happened to them. Or might happen to them. Better turn the lights back on before I get my balls out. <laughs> Classic Sigma. Classic Sigma. Alright, so we'll turn the lights back on and head back to the pool table. Alright, what am I supposed to do with these white balls? Maybe you need to drop them into the pockets on the pool table? Yeah, it looks like it. Place each of the six balls into the correct pockets in the following order. A, B, C, D, E, F. Each of the six balls into the correct order. Specific balls must go in specific pockets. For instance, ball A would need to go into pocket A and so forth. Drag each ball to the desired pocket and then release the ball to drop it. Clicking the yellow triangle will allow you to switch which ball group is displayed, either 1 to 8 or 9 to 15. Alright, let's give it a try. So, huh. So it looks like A is a purple one, right? I'm a little bit concerned whether or not we actually have all the information we need right now. So A is in the top right and it's purple, correct? So let's look at our archive here. Purple was 12 and 4. So the question is, do we use 12 or 4, right? Um, 12 could be up there, right? So we could do 12 like this, and that would be the A pocket. Hmm. Because for C, D, e, and E, we're going to have to choose one of the pairs. And if that's the case, we're already getting into like 16 different possibilities here. So I'm not really sure which of the two I should be using. I mean, what I can say with confidence is what B and F are going to be, right? So, well, I know which two they're going to be, but I don't know what color they'll be. Or which of the two colors they'll be. There's right, one and nine. Hmm. I would think B would be one, right? And then F would be nine. Wait a minute. So that didn't work. Right? Let me try nine going in the, the B hole there. Oh, no, wait, it's the order, right? So, A is always the first one we put, right? Um, it, we just didn't know whether it was 4 or or 14 or 1. Oh, man, I hate how frequently I have to look back at this. No, it's 12 or 4. And so we chose 12 last time. And we said A was up here. So we did that. And it looks like that's okay on our monitor in the top right there. So next up is B, which is going to be the lower left corner. Now, B was either 1 or 9. I'm tempted to think it is 1. So let's put 1 in the lower left corner. And note that it looks like that, which is not very reassuring. That doesn't look good to me. But I guess we'll continue on to C anyway. C is going to be on the top left, and it is orange, meaning it is either 5 or 13. We'll go with 5 for now, because I don't really know what else. That looks fine, but at the same time, it's different from, well, the first one, too. Although, I guess, by definition, it was already that different shape, like F is right now. So next up is going to be D, which is middle right. D is blue, meaning it's either 2 or 10. Let's go with 2 again. Let's see what happens. So it does that. Interesting. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> so E is green, 6 or 14. So, which one was it again? It was the bottom right. And it was, let's be clear, 6 or 14. Okay. That makes me think that it's correct, actually, now that it's lighting up in the color that I put in there. So then F would be middle left, and I think the only one left for that is 9. So, failed it, but learned quite a bit so I think B is gonna be one here F is going to be nine 
D, what did we use for D before? We chose two, I believe. We chose two. Um, a was incorrect, and what did we choose for A? I think we chose 12. So we'll go with four for A this time and see how that changes things. Good, good, good. So then B, lower left, we chose one. And then C was top left. We did not get that one correct. What did we choose? Did we choose 5 or 13? I think we chose 5, but I don't remember. Let's try 13 here, right? And again, C is top left. Okay. So that was 13. And then next up is D, which we said is 2. D is middle right. And then we said, what did we do for E last time? E is green. We did, did we do 6 or 14? I think we did six. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna write that down um, just to be consistent in case I mess up this F one. Although it's actually impossible, right? Because there's only one more F at this point, so cool. So we did that successfully. I don't know if there was something else in the room that was telling me, was supposed to tell me that specific pattern. But I guess we got it otherwise. I mean, we, we take those, right? <laughs> so that, that works out for me. And something, well, something got, came out of the, the ball dispenser area. So, ha, huh, that was easy. It looks like something came out of the ball retrieval slot. You see, down here? Yeah, I wonder, it looks like almost like a capsule machine, you guys, right? Doesn't, is that what it reminds you guys of? What is this? Some sort of container, huh? There's something inside. Why don't you take it out? It looks like the dart tips. Sounds good. I'll just hang on to this then. Yeah, so there are the dart tips. Now we can combine that with the dart case, and we have our darts. Lovely. Now let's take a look at this, right? It looks like three bullseyes, red, blue, green. But the score is 91. I don't really know much about the colors there, but... Either way, the dart is split up, or the board is split up into red, blue, and green. Meaning, oh, meaning we need to create a score of 91 using a first dart of red, a second dart of blue, and a third dart of green. So how can we do that, right? Um, there are a few different combinations. We've got, I guess if our last one is gonna be green, ah, oh, there are a lot of different combinations. Um, what are the numbers we're working with? So let's, what's a good way of thinking about this, right? So the first number is going to be in, or the first dart's going to be in red, right? And that red could be either a six, it could be 22, it could be, what's down there? That's, uh, oh wait, no, that's a nine up there, isn't it? Yeah, so let's erase that. That is technically a nine reading upside down and then that's a six triple so an 18 and then we have a 13 and then we have a 17 times 2 a 34 7 times 3 a 21 hopefully my mental math isn't off this time <laughs> I promise guys I, I uh, still try to make up for that all right and now what else do we have we have a double 9 so an 18 we have a triple 11 so 33 and then we have a double whatever that is, a double eight. So 16, oh, change colors by accident. Double eight was 16. And then we have a triple 13, which is a 39. Single 17, one of my favorite numbers. And then we have a double seven, which is a 14. And then lastly, we have the greens, right? So the green is going to be a triple nine, which is 27. Then we have a single 11, and then we have two potential here, right? We have eight, or we have 24. And then we have a double 13, which is 26. Then we have a triple 17, which is 51, another one of my favorite numbers. And then we have a single seven. And so the goal is to, using some combination, add up to the number 91. 
Um, is there anything glaring here? I mean, using the big number combinations, we can rule some things out, right? So if I initially look at something like, like 34 into 39, right? That's immediately gonna put me at 73, meaning none of these will work. Seven gets me to 80, eight gets me to 81, 11 gets me to um, 84, and then everything else is way over 91. So it can't be 34 and 39. But I feel like that's not a very efficient way of evaluating these different um, you know, combinations, is to more or less look at each of them. I could similarly rule out some of the other extremes, so like 34 and 33, 77, 11 is not going to get me high enough, neither will 8 or 7, and the others will be too much. So it's not going to be 34 and 33 and 39. Um, I could look at some of the other stuff like, you know, 9 and 16 and 8 is obviously not going to be the correct answer because there's no way that'll get me up there high enough. So... So what's a good way of going about this? I think what I'm gonna try and do is for each number that we have here on the left in our red column, I'm gonna see if I can get some other combination between blue and green that adds up to whatever the difference between 91 and the red number is. So for nine, for example, we need the numbers, the two num a pair of numbers to add up to 82 between blue and green. And I don't see that happening um, with any of these. Adding up to 82, right? And the only realistic options are like the 30 somethings and the 50. Otherwise, we're not adding up to 82. And if that's the case, that means 9 cannot be the correct red. So then we say, all right, 22, right? And we're adding up to 91. That means the other numbers would have to add up to 69. Is there something that adds up to that? Well, with 18, yes, 18 and 51 would add up to 69 with 22. So that actually makes me think it's the correct answer. Yeah, because looking at 33, that wouldn't be the case. 16, also not the case. Adding up to 69, that is. 39 would not as well. A lot of this, you can look at the singles no, singles digit and just see if it's going to add up to 9. And um, I'm not seeing those combinations. So... Given we already found one that's correct, I think we should try this and see how it goes. So red 22, blue 18, and green 51. Let's see if we can use the darts on the dart board. We can just place them. Get a score of 91 with three darts. Keep in mind, however, the score for each area must have a specific relationship to the other scores. Toss a dart into each area to reach the correct point value. To throw a dart at a particular area, drag and then release the dart in the area where you'd like it to land. So we said the first one was red 22, right? So red 22, and then a blue 18, which we said was this one. And then the last one was green 51, which is the triple 17. Failed? Oh no. So that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, so we found this combination that adds up to 91. We must be misinterpreting one of the items, is all I can think of. Looks like we won't be getting very far just tossing them randomly. We may have to use our heads a bit for this one. Hmm. So let's take a look at this and examine again. Now that we've taken the dart shafts out of here, we don't really need this case anymore, do we? Not for holding darts, no, but it's got some markings on it. You're right. Look here. It's got three images of darts and targets. One's red, one's blue, and one's green. It says score 91. I wonder what it means. Oh! <laughs> so, 
I thought it was... <laughs> These were arrows indicating some degree of order, right? That the red had to be first, the blue had to be second, and the green had to be third. But it's actually an inequality. <laughs> it's a greater than sign, guys. <laughs> so, red has to be greater than blue, it has to be greater than green. So, let's see what options we have here, right? Um, it's going to be easiest if we choose a high value for red, right? So 34, um, and that's going to open up a lot of doors. So we could do something like 34, 33, which is going to give us 67. Is there something else that'll be 34 or 24? Yes, there is. So that's going to be our answer here is 34, 33, and then 24. And I don't think the order actually matters. <laughs> Can't believe I overlooked that. That's pretty funny. All right, so 34 in red. How do we get that again? We got that with double 17. And then we had... It's tough to read. <laughs> 33 in blue. That's going to be the triple 11. And then lastly, the 24 in green. And that's going to be our triple 8. Lovely. Whew. All right. Good work. Looks like you got it. Well done, Sigma. Look, the screen has changed. Yeah, it has. It's the escape password. Is this a password? Oh, well done. This must be for the safe. You did it. All right, we found a password. Let me clarify it just to be safe. I mean, we're obviously going to try to get both, but... Oh, no, that's actually the hidden file password. <laughs> Why does that always happen? So, hidden file password is what we just got. Um... The real question is, how do we get the other password? Is there something else we can do with the, with the stage? With this scoreboard up here, maybe? I don't know. Um, let's take a look at what we have in our inventory. We still have this photo of K, Z9, D1. I was thinking, if we invert this, could we do something like 1D and 6Z? Uh, but that doesn't seem to be too productive. This photo is such a classic. Somebody needs to put that on the refrigerator. The only other thing I can think of is, is there another set of three darts that fit the inequality we set earlier? If um, if red is bigger than blue and is bigger than, which is bigger than green, and they have to add up to 91, um, red cannot be less than the average of their of the three numbers. Basically. Red can't be smaller than, what, 30? So, red has to be 34. And if red is only 34, which is not that much higher than the average, blue also can't be, can't be that much lower than the average, right? So blue's only real options here are 33 and 39. So let's invest, and 39 doesn't fit that. So 33 is the only answer for blue, which means 24 is the only, that's the only combination, 34, 33, 24 of these three that's gonna actually work. Hmm. So then the question becomes, how do we get the actual escape password? <laughs> right, how did we get the more obtuse, I don't know. The only other thing I can think of is it's related to the, the billiards table, right? Because this scoreboard seems to be begging to display a password. However, this screen does too, right? The control panel looks like it says something on the screen. Rectangular button turns stage lights on and off. Circular button activates armor. Although, let me think. We didn't actually do anything with this trident, right? What can we do with the trident? Hmm, spear like weapon with a three-pronged tip. What if we give that to one of our, you know, friends here? Can I switch it out? So the lights turn on when you press the rectangular button. I wouldn't think we'd be able to see any distinct shadows with the room lights on, but it seems a little odd that we can't see any shadows. Should we turn off the room lights? I believe the switch is near the exit. Yeah, that's true. Um, I know that thing's heavy and all, but that one's got its hands full too. Maybe try another suit of armor? Well, I was thinking I could just swamp them. You really think that's a good idea? Okay, so I guess not. So we don't really mess with these suits of armor. What if I give the trident over to this guy? What's that gonna do? Suit of armor. I don't think I need to mess with it anymore. <laughs> I don't know what that's gonna do. Let's hit 
the button to make them play. You can leave it alone now. All right, well, that's at least helpful. What happens if I turn the lights off? Anything about the shadows, maybe? Hmm. What's the purpose of giving the trident to that suit of armor? I'm not sure. Let's turn the lights off. And take a look at the stage. Anything? Can I turn the lights on? Does that do something? Is that pertinent somehow? There are two circles of light like you'd get from a spotlight on the back wall of the stage. It seems the lights are actually coming from the other side of the wall. What? As you can see, the light isn't hitting the armor, which means the spotlights in front of the stage are fakes. That's actually a very clever, ob very clever um, observation, Kay. That totally went over my head. There must be some sort of lighting apparatus on the other side of the wall. Hmm... The other question is, how is that relevant? It's so dark in here, I'm not even sure what I'm touching. Ah! Okay, what was that noise? I definitely haven't broken anything. <laughs> you sure? Ah! What are you doing, Alice? Please don't accidentally break something valuable. You're one to talk. I guess it's dangerous to just fumble around in the dark. I guess so. So if there are lights on the other side, and the ones in front are fake. Maybe the intention here is after discovering that those are fake, we can inspect them and discover something useful. That's what comes to mind, but I don't know 100% by any means. Spotlight, it's on. Is it though? Why did we give that suit of armor the trident? don't need to animate the suits of armor anymore. I have this picture and I have these instructions and the only solution that fits these instructions is that. The only other I can th thing I can think of is if we were to like reverse it so that the green is larger than the blue is larger than the red but it doesn't seem to make sense given that we could have utilized this other stuff over here right this whole information about how the spotlights are really behind the curtain or is there some way we can actually pull back this stage screen or something? There are lights shining on the stage, but something seems off about them. I should turn off the lights. The switch should be near the exit. So why is that relevant? Because I know what you know they're going to say about it, right? So we'll turn the lights off again. Is there something else... I should really be paying attention to. I don't know. Hmm. The shadows on the wall behind the suits of armor are fake. Oh, you know what? I bet that we needed to look at these shadows in order to determine who would hold which weapon earlier in the puzzle, but we just didn't end up utilizing that information at all to figure that out. So I bet that's why this is the, the way it is. That doesn't explain the trident. That's the only thing that's not really um, relevant at the moment. So we'll, we'll turn the lights back on. And I want to take a look at the dart numbers again to see, because most of the time, and what's actually really nice is now that I've been through a few of these rooms, the hidden file password and the escape password are usually just the same information reworked in some different manner. Input on one of the few remaining devices you actually can input something. So for example, let's check the dart, get a score of 91 with three darts. We can still place darts, so I can almost guarantee you that finding the other password is going to be through placing these darts, right? So the question is, how are we going to place those darts? So if it's backwards, right? So green and then blue and then red, using the same sort of logic related to the average of the numbers, we have to start with green of 51. So then what do we do for the second one? Well, it means the second one can't really be, no, I guess it can't be 39. Um, so we rule that out. Could it be 33? 
Could it be 33? No, it can't be. So, it has to be something in the, well, 14, 17, 16, 18. That's not incredibly helpful. And in fact, that solidifies that there is no solution such that the green is larger than the blue and the blue is larger than the red. If that's the case though, then what else are we supposed to do? I guess one other thing I can think of... Well, hmm, this is hard. It's almost certainly something we have to input here. So the question is, do we get that information from somewhere else? Because I'm thinking, what if we went back to the pool table? Can I still interact with the pool table? The pool table. No, it doesn't seem so. Pool table... Pool table... <laughs> The ball retrieval slot, nothing here, I guess. So I was only able to play that mini game when I had the billiard balls that I could actually interact with the, or use on the table. Because I was thinking there were those pairs of billiard balls, right? And so what if I use the opposite one from the one that was actually successful for the, the game? But no, it truly is just the dart mini game. Something relevant with the jukebox? This jukebox is clearly here as part of a puzzle, but I wonder if it can play normal records. It doesn't look like it. Is there anything else relevant here? We don't have coins, we can't operate it anymore. Same with the zero thing. Anything up here? There's a deer mount on the wall. It's just a decoration. No. Okay. Is there something on the back of the screen? Let's look over here and see if there's anything else. So this one says a score of 120. Right? So maybe... Maybe that's what we do for the green password. 20, 40, 60. It's, I mean, the instructions say otherwise, but... Let's see here. So 20... Yeah. 20, 40, and then 60. Alright, so that was a failure. So we really do have to add up to 91. Is there another solution that ignores that inequality? We already tried it, right? 22, 33, and 24. Are there many other solutions? I don't really think so. Maybe, but probably not. Hmm. Yeah, I don't... I don't know, guys. <laughs> I, uh, I really don't know here. So, my apologies. I'm kind of running through some quick math. Let's see, 21, 33, and 27. Would that work? 54, 27... No, that would be one short, or ten short. So that wouldn't work. So none of the ones with 21 for the first number are real combinations. We already chose the one that's for 34. Which would be 34, um, 33, and 24, right? Can't be 18. Can't be 16. Can it be 34, 39, and 8? No. That's still going to leave me 10 short as well. Uh, yeah, then, I mean, other than the one that we already tried, it's not 34. 13, I'm just kind of brute forcing at this point, just looking at the singles digit, seeing if I can create combinations that line up well. Um, and I'm not having a lot of luck. 13, 17, 51 is still 10 short. 
Yeah, so it's not gonna be 13. What about when 18 is a number? No, I don't think that's going to do it either. 67, oh, 67 and 24, right? So, or no, it's still, I did that math wrong. 18 and 39 is um, 57, not 67. So that's still gonna be 10 short as well. 18, 17, um, and 18, 14, that's not gonna do it either. We already found one combination with 22, right? 22, 18, and 51. I don't think we're gonna find a combination involving nine. No, we're not. So we've already found the only two combinations there are that work. Which makes me think that the one we already used, 34, 33, and 24, is, you know, the one that's the hidden file solution, and the 22, 18, 51 is a different one. So let's try different orders of 22, 18, and 51. I think we tried this order. I mean, for what it's worth, there are only six. If I'm kind of blatantly just brute forcing it at this point, it hardly feels like I'm solving it, but I feel like this has to be the combination 22, 18, 51. What if we tried, are there different ways to make these numbers? No. 22 and then 51 and then 18. Nope. Okay, then we'll try 18, 22, 51. Nope. Then we'll do 18, 51, 22. Nope. So, all right, um, 51, 22, 18. Okay, um, 51, what did we do last time? Did we do 22, 18? I think so. So then 18 and 22. So that's not right either. So the only other thing I can think of is we can make 18 one of two ways on this dartboard. We can make it with a double nine or a triple six. And I can't think of why one would be better than the other. So, I mean, we'll, we'll try it, right? 22, 18, 51. 22, and then 18 with the triple six. And then 51 with the triple 17. I'm trying to think if there's one way to do it with all the same numbers. So maybe all red or all green or all blue? Is that something we should be considering? Uh, I don't think we can do that with many of them. Maybe with the blues, 33 and 39 would give me 72, and 17 is not gonna be enough. With the greens, could we do that? We would have to use the 51, and... No. No, we can't. So it's not like it's, you know, all reds, or all blues, or all greens. With the three numbers we do have, 22, 18, and 51, I don't see a combination that's like all triples, or all singles, or all doubles. Or one single, one double, one triple, right? So the question is, what are we missing? 
What are we missing? It has to be this dartboard. And this is this is kind of what can be obtuse at times. It's like I feel like I utilize the information that was directing me in the way I was supposed to try to you know figure out the order and all that jazz. And now I'm just kind of guessing at how else can I potentially interpret this and then trying it and, and seeing. And when I'm kind of blindly stumbling around in the dark, it's not like I'm really figuring something out so much as, you know, throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. But... Let's see. Making a score of 91. We tried all six combinations involving 22, 18, and 51 using the number 9. We didn't do it with the number 6. I guess I guess that's something we can do. Um, 22, 51, 18. 22, 51, and then 18 involving the triple 6 again. No. Alright, so next up will be 18, 22, 51. 18, 22, 51. No. Nope. So next up will be 18, 51, 22. No. Nope. So the last one is going to be, <clears throat> or the last ones will be 51, 22, 18. So then it'll be 51, 18, 22. Yeah, so we're, we're clearly missing something. Why is there even a bullseye if our score, if our goal is to get 91, right? Hmm, this is hard. I, mean, I don't feel like it's hard, I just don't know what I'm doing. I feel like this is just explaining the rules. Apparently, I wonder if there are instructions for the dart scoreboard. Are these the rules darts normally use? I have no idea. Isn't darts just a way to flirt with girls? I guess some people use it that way, but darts is a legitimate and dignified indoor sport for gentlemen. What? Where you compete to see how many girls you can get? What the heck happened to you? You found a poster with instructions for darts. Anything interesting about this poster? I don't know. The only other thing I can think of is they didn't want me to leave this room without that, and so they were preventing me from doing that. Hmm. The score for each area must have a specific relationship to that of the other darts. Hmm. I mean, we already tried reversing the order, right? 24, 33, 34. It was, yeah, 24, 33, 34. What? I, um... Excuse me? I swear I tried that at some point. I'm gonna- I'm gonna check the footage after this. It's- it's super late and I really need to go to sleep, but I am gonna check the footage after this because I swear I tried that. And I would bet, if that's the case, the only thing keeping that from being considered correct was the fact that I hadn't picked up the- the instructions. Well, I tried using the same solution as before, but the screen hasn't changed. To view the password you found, visit the archive and navigate to the Pass tab. What did we just find? Wait, what? 24, 33, 34. Did we not do the other way? 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If I didn't do 34... 34, 33, 24. Well, I tried using the same solution as before, but the screen hasn't changed. So that was the different order. Hmm. So the order doesn't matter. Is what I'm getting from that. So it must be a unique set of three numbers to input. And if the order doesn't matter, what the heck are we supposed to input? I already tried the only other set of three that works. Unless I'm just overlooking something completely. Which is always a possibility, obviously. I've got an idea. We're just gonna do three bullseyes for the lulls. <laughs> Let me, uh, hmm, this is hard. Get a score of 91 with three darts. Keep in mind, however, the score for each area must have a specific relationship to the other scores. So this makes me think, because again, the order didn't matter, it's just a matter of having, you have to have one green, one blue, and one red, and they must have that inequality demonstrated in the dark case. But we've already determined there's only one combination that actually does that. Are there multiple ways to get 22 here? No, it's only 11 times 2, and there's no 22 column. Are there multiple ways to get 18? Yes. Just the 9 and the 6. We've already established that. Let me think. Is it about what area they're in? So 34 is 17, but 51 is also 17, so no, that's not it. It is the number after it's been calculated. It's not just the, the slice of the, of the dartboard that it's in. Right, so 34 would be equivalent to 51 if it was only the 17 that mattered. But no, it's, you know, the actual calculation. Um, 33 is 11. Red has to be bigger than blue, has to be bigger than green. Or maybe it is actually, I was, I miss, uh, misspoke earlier and said the 17. So maybe it is like the general category, right? So 34 represents 17. The 33 represents 11 and the 24 represents eight. And that's the inequality that matters more so than the actual numbers after they've been computed with their triple and double bonuses, etc. If that's the case, is there a combination of 22, 18, and 51 that works? If 51 is 17, well, 22 is 11, and 18 could be 9 or 6. That's not going to change anything, right? Because green's always going to be bigger in that regard. Is there another way to make 24 with this? Don't think so. There's no quadruple. It was red. It's bigger than blue. It's bigger than green. only have three darts. I'm on, the, I'm on the verge of just looking it up because at this point, like I said, I feel like I'm just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. I have considered, I know it has to be some sort of dart input, but it, I've found what I believe are the only two combinations that add up to 91.
so. Yeah, I, um. I don't know, guys. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, I completely forgot about a slice. I just completely neglected this slice. There should be a 20 here, and there should be a 60 here, and there should be a 40 here in the green. And, um, that's a game changer. <laughs> that's a game changer. Because now there are actually more solutions. And, namely, the one that matters is, I know this is getting pretty ridiculous trying to keep track of what all my scribbles are saying, but the 18 here, and now if we combine that 18 with the 33 here, and we combine that with the 40 here, that's going to give us 91. I can't even believe I just forgot a com an entire wedge of the dartboard. <sighs> um, so what else is relevant about this? Um, we were talking earlier about the comparison of the numbers, right? So we said 34, 33, and 24 was one of them because red had to be greater than blue, had to be greater than green. This is pretty similar, I think, in that, um, or actually, no, it's, it's different. The red would be the 18, which is 9 times 2, or 6 times 3. The blue 33 would be the 11, and then the 40 would be derivative of the, the 20, right? So that would be the opposite order. So I'm actually curious. I want to take a look at the this again. Hmm. So I guess... When you look at this initially, you're supposed to say it's a greater than sign. But the other combination I just noted is where the red would be less than the blue, less than the green. Maybe the hint that that's a second solution is that when you open this, it does that, and that's... Well, no, that doesn't mean anything, because even when the glass is flipped like that, it's still red is greater than blue is greater than green, if, you're, if you look at it, right? So I guess... You're supposed to sort of intuitively flip it so the red is less than blue is less than green, and that's the solution you'll get as a result. Hmm. Because, yeah, this is the opposite of that inequality. The red 18 is less than the 33 blue, which is less than the green 40. I don't know what about the dark clue would have told you that. Right? The hidden file password I would expect maybe to be the sort of obtuse, like, reinterpretation of the clue they give you. But the clue they give you is very strictly red is greater than blue is greater than green. And that gets you the hidden file password and the actual escape password is doing the opposite of the order the clue gives you. Hmm. I'm, uh, not a big fan of that. But, that's okay. So red would be 18, and then blue would be 33, and then green would be 40. Still can't even believe I completely missed that wedge. Alright. You tried a different solution this time, I see. Yeah, I did. Looks like it worked out. See, the screen changed. Yep, so we've got ourselves the escape password. This one's different. A new password. Yep, so... Um... I don't like that. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot... To, I don't think there's much more to say than... That doesn't make a lot of sense. I certainly didn't notice that specific combination of three. I still would have tried it if I had not made the silly mistake of overlooking that slice completely. But even then... I have a really hard time justifying, oh, the actual solution, the escape solution, is you have to do it the opposite of the inequality they show you in the hint for the puzzle. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But anyways, here is the safe. We're going to start off with a hidden file password, which is going to be moon, sun, sun. 
So let's try that. See what we find. Ha! Piece of cake! So there's the gold file. Lovely. We'll be... I'm excited to check those out later on. And then the last one is... Password, Rec Room, Sun, Moon Sun. Okay. Alright. And with that, we've made it out of the Rec Room. Alright. It opened. So we've got a couple of... Um, actually, we collect our spoils first. Oh, they pick up a map first. A map. It says Floor B. The one I found in the lounge said Floor A. Then that must mean Floor A is the top floor. We rode the elevator down to get to this floor, after all. Yeah, makes sense. And then we've got a couple of Ambidex cards. Moving on, next we've got... Uh... Some key cards. They have an image of the moon on them. That must mean these are what that announcer was talking about. The moon keys. We've got two of them just like with the sun keys. Alright, Kay, you take one. Why? You're a solo. Alice and I will take the other one. Ah, yes, of course. Thank you. And the last prize, let's see here. A key. This must be for the exit. Now we can leave. Yep. Alright, off we go. What are we waiting for then? You to finish your dialogue, Alice. That's what we're waiting for. This is the lock for the exit. It says lock right now. Time to kiss this weird room goodbye. I actually had a rather nice time. <laughs> of course you did, Kay. <laughs> Whatever, I'd rather forget any of this ever happened. Three, two, one... Here we go. Alright, we found it. Overall, pretty cool room. Overall. Escape password, not a big fan, but you know, overall cool room. I like the dart puzzle. From a mathy standpoint. You can make it a little bit more efficient by, you know, using some some number theory type stuff, which is cool. But Anyways, now we are in Warehouse B. We're going to, you know, do some analysis. I've spent way longer on this than I had planned to, so it's very late and I'm very tired. So we're going to continue having fun with Kay and Alice and, and other friends in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you guys weren't too frustrated by my complete, you know, missing of a wedge of the dartboard. Uh, but are looking forward to whatever we find out about Kay, Alice, and, and friends in the future. But until the next episode, it's Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete. Thank <laughs> you.